Alright, so the video that you are about to see has been edited completely on this Dell Inspiron B120 from 2005. You can see the specs right here. And I go more into the specs of this laptop in particular in the video. So yeah, roll it. In order to edit a video, what kind of computer do you need? Do you need something like this that's super powerful and like brand new and everything? Look at how good the scrubbing performance is on it. Now let me show you something that's a 15th of the performance. This is an HP LeapBook 8440p with a first gen dual core i5. You can see that all of these clips are in standard definition, but they work perfectly fine on this laptop. These are all standard definition clips that I took on my camcorder. Switching to HD ABC HD clips that I took on my camcorder, the scrubbing performance is still decent but noticeably lower, but I was still able to get a usable editing experience out of it. But what about something that's a fourth of that performance? This is a Dell Inspiron B120 with a 1.4 GHz Celeron CPU. And running the same software with similar standard definition video clips, you can see how much lower the scrubbing performance is, even only with standard definition clips. But here's the kicker, if I'm using a computer that's a 45th of the performance of my regular gaming computer, how am I still editing videos on it? At this point, it should be impossible. It should also be impossible for this thing to render out a 40 second 720p30 video in just 3 minutes but it can still do that. And in this video, I'm gonna be explaining how. Now, what programs are the best for editing on super low-end computers? Well, on my main computer, I use DaVinci Resolve. But back when I first started doing video editing on my computer back in 2020, I found that Sony Vegas Pro 14 had a way better performance than DaVinci Resolve 16 did at the time. But on a computer like this, your choices for editing software are a little bit more limited, but still decent, because you have options like Sony Vegas Pro 8, for example. You also have EDS 5, Serif Movie Plus X6, and X5 even Premiere Pro CS4, but Premiere, at least on this computer, is a lot slower than Vegas 8. But in order to get decent performance, the type of video editor that you use is only a piece of the puzzle. You also need to optimize your clips. That's why things like proxies, intermediate codecs, and optimized media exists, which is often a lower quality version of your video clip that's way easier to edit than your high quality originals. Here's what happens when you try to edit a modern codec on this thing. Okay, so you can see right here I've imported some videos with a modern codec. Let's see how they run on this laptop. So first of all, let's use the 480p version of the video. And with a 720p project. Let's see how this plays. Let's go ahead and start it at 20, 9, 8. So it starts off fast and then it slows down greatly. And it's normalizing at around 5 to 8 FPS. What about the 720p version of the video? Started off at 23, it already quickly went down to 3, I'm now playing at 2 FPS, and you can see that the frame rate is very unstable. And if you play for long enough, the frame rate will fall below 1 frame per second. Now, what about the super high resolution 1080p version of the video? And you can see I can't even see the video because it's not playing, and it's already fallen under 1 frame per second, around 0.6. So, obviously, this is pretty unusable for regular video editing. So the best way to get video clips that work on this laptop is not even to convert the videos because that takes a lot of time. The best way is just to film in those super optimized codecs. And this camcorder right here that I'm filming on, the Sony CX210, in 480p mode records in MPEG-2, which is a very optimized codec and it works very well with Sony Vegas Pro 8 because it has native support for it. And I personally have had a lot of success with MPEG-2 video clips, but on even slower computers than even this Dell Inspiron, I've seen people edit videos with MPEG-1, which is apparently even easier to run, or even DV. I don't know anything about DV, but that's apparently very, very good for super light video editing. I saw someone edit a full 15 minute video on a 500 megahertz iMac G3, which is very cool. And I'll put the video up here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.